Hello, back again. Right, so we've got some new um, zero issues to uh, talk about, but before I actually delve into those, I just want to show you the new ones that I've got today. Okay, <coughs> hang on. Right. So um, we've picked up Aquaman Zero, right, along with Superman Zero, mm -hmm. and of course the Flash Zero. Wait a second. Hang on. Yeah, the Flash Zero. <laughs> Sorry, I had a bit of a deja vu thing going on there. I thought it was a Flash 12. <laughs> I was like, right, I already read the Flash 12. But yeah, it's a Flash Zero. And of course, issue two of Phantom Lady and Dollman, uh, written by Justin Gray, Jimmy Palmiotti, and as you can see down there as well, Kat Staggs, who does Smallville, and Tom Derenick. So can't wait to read that very soon but anyway as I say it's all about the zero issues this month people all right so we're cracking on and we have these four we have Batwoman um, <coughs> Justice League Legion of Superheroes and Supergirl all right so now let's see <laughs> let's start shall we Batwoman this has been one hell of a series so far if you have not picked up Batwoman you haven't thought about reading it or you don't think it's probably your thing trust me right now when I tell you it will be your thing I've already done my issues 1 to 12 in two separate videos which is 1 to 6 and 7 to 12 so have a look at those and then you'll see what she's all about now this one obviously goes back to before she became Batwoman how she became Batwoman why she became Batwoman you know what happened to her as a kid with her twin sister um, and her father as well um, you know, it was all about her. It was all about, um, you know, looking after Beth. She loved Beth like crazy, and Beth always looked out for her. Um, but the thing with Kate was that she always had a, she, she, she had this mean streak. She was always, a, I would say, not anger issues, but she was, she was like an ex like a time bomb right, waiting to explode, basically. Um, but she always, but she missed Beth, and. She hated her dad for, for, for a time and um, you know the, the way that the comic starts out it's like she leaves a message before she goes out on patrol or before she's going to go out on a mission she's always leaving a message a goodbye message for her dad because she doesn't know if she's going to come back and you know it's a message for her dad to find it should she never come back and as the whole the whole literally the whole comic is of this message that she has left for her dad um, you know growing up you know her dad working in, in the military and she then decides to follow in his footsteps um, living her life as, as, as she could as, as best as she could but I think it wasn't the case as, as best as she could she was just wanting to you know get the attention of her dad again she, she missed her dad she wanted to be with her dad despite the fact that he was remarried and everything um, she just wanted him to take care of her again so the whole vigilante thing she started that off and um, when her dad found out well he then thought <clears throat> I might as well help you out kind of thing so he does puts her through some very very rigorous training for a number of years um, you know and is helping her to uh, find her feet again learn some learn learn some new moves and learn the tricks learn, learn the ways of, of, of what of what he's done in the army and such um, you know and she's stationed out in Africa at one point volunteering and is you know wants to take down a gang of, uh, of, of bad men who have been you know doing bad things to children turning the girls into sex slaves and the boys into killers kind of thing um, then again she goes off to Russia as well and I think it's the one in Russia is where it really all came to a head for her because, well, again, without revealing too much of what, what actually happens, and if you haven't read it, trust me, it's it's very, very good. Um, just to see, it was a test, basically, is all I'm going to say. But a test to see how far she would go. Would she could, she could she cross that line? Could she, you know, do the things that she wouldn't really want to do? You know, and... It just, as I say, the whole issue from from start to finish, you're just glued. You're just glued into it. And it's like you're in there and you're following Kate on her journey becoming Batwoman. And I have to hand it to um, 
to J.H. Uh, Williams III and W. Hayden, w. Hayden Blackman seriously the work that they have done in Batwoman and I even said it on, um, on Twitter earlier this week that I think that Batwoman has become one of the most delicately written comic books this side of um, of the new 52 of the, of the relaunch um, just getting a bit of light because it's a bit dark all of a sudden sorry um, but yeah it's just one of those issues that has just picked up it's one of those comic book stories that you just look at and you think there's something extraordinary going on here and that's what it is with Batwoman that's what I love about it um, so yeah <laughs> here we go but yeah as I say get hold of it and you will see what I'm talking about okay now because I've spent so much time on that I'm going to have to quite somehow rush through the others Justice League Zero now as you can see the front cover has Shazam he's no more called Captain Marvel okay if you've been reading the latest issues of Justice League itself um, you'll know that towards the back pages there's a feature set feature of uh, Shazam um, as I say he's not called Captain Marvel anymore legal reasons with Marvel themselves and they've obviously got their Captain Marvel back on the fray as well so yeah he's now known as Shazam but here we go Billy Batson has uh, somehow been able to he's entered the rock of eternity as I would like to call it um, and it's the wizard the last wizard standing if you've seen the um, the free, com free, free comic book that I got from comic book, free comic book day um, there's the uh, trinity of sin Pandora question and um, Phantom Stranger and all three of them were condemned p by seven powerful wizards um, and this one particular wizard is now the only one that's left standing and he is pretty much looking for someone to take on the mantle of Shazam to um, stop Black Adam because he has now re-emerged and he's looking at Billy Batson and thinking you're, you're not of, um, of pure heart you know you don't have pure good in you and Billy Batson's like well you know, you're, you're looking for someone who's got a pure goodness in them, but that's not how the world is actually perceived at all. You know, he literally, Billy Batson, a kid, is given what can, what I can only describe as a thousands of years old wizard the lessons of the, the, the earth, basically, in that it's not a case of finding a pure good person solidly just because you think they exist. It's about the fact that people have good in them their intentions are good but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are born of pure good so he then sees the other side of um, of Billy and then thinks ah right yeah the kid's got a point <laughs> and um, gives him the whole you know g gives him the word of power you know Shazam and when he says it well epic transformation for the win there you go I quite like the cape I think the cape is actually not, not this it's a lot bigger than, than, previous, than the previous one but I actually think it works and um, so anyway Billy's all high and mighty and powerful now the wizard is telling him what, what it is he should be doing with his powers um, you know that you know when you use the word of power you've got to use it with conviction protect those around you look after your family kind of thing and um, he first of all meets goes back to Freddy and shows Freddy what he can do um, saves a woman for who's about to be mugged and oh, hello and it's just basically just you know, using his powers, hopefully for good anyway, but, um, so it centres all on Shazam, there's no mention of Batman, Superman and Wonder Woman in here, or, in, you know, the rest of the Justice League just yet, but even though towards the back we even have a little snippet of, um, of Pandora, and then there's also one to do with a certain particular question as well, which I can't wait, this looks like this is going to be awesome. Um, the Trinity of Sin looks like it's going to be one hell of a story arc once that kicks off but there you have it, Justice League Zero people, seriously, get it alright um, Legion of Superhero Zero now you might be wondering, he's talking about Legion of Superhero Zero but I haven't actually mentioned the individual comics that I've bought previously as well, the 12 issues, the reason being is because even though I bought the first issue and I talked about it good lord after that, um, I completely forgot about Legion of Superheroes and kept buying the issues after the, uh, the initial release so that's why I never spoke about them so I do apologise about that but anyway Legion of Superhero Zero um, it centres all on the guy on the front cover Brainiac 5 pretty much he's um, it, it, it comes to it comes to a revelation that he's the one responsible 
for the attack on his home planet Kolu. Um, he he basically got very curious about what is hidden in this in this vault, and um, it unleashed a power so big that um, the Legion were called in to come and help thwart said threat. Um, so you've got Cosmic Boy, you've got Phantom Girl, you've got Lightning Lad, you've got Saturn Girl in there as well. I say you've got Saturn Girl, although no, Saturn Girl's not even there. It's Cosmic Boy, Phantom Girl, and Ultra Boy, along with Lightning Lad as well as I've said. So it's just those those, those particular um, members that are there. At this point, no flight rings have been made, so they're not they're not able to fly um, apart from Phantom Girl. And obviously, Cosmic Boy uses his magnetic you know powers to allow him to levitate and move as 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 as, as he wishes. Um, and it's all about saving this particular one child. Um, because children on Kolu are quite, how should I put it, rare. <laughs> so it's all about looking after that and making sure that that child comes to no harm. And, um, you know, as it says here, it says, The child, we are long-lived and reproduce rarely. This is the firstborn since the Brainiac child, a.k.a. Brainiac 5. So they have to protect the child at every cost possible. So, um... You know, as I say, as, as as the comic goes on, you then actually see that Brainiac, um, you know, is uh, is all about making sure that no one finds out what he has actually done. Oh, he's been a bad, bad, bad Kolu, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> but he wants he wants to make up for his sins, you know. And um, but one, I've read I've read the, uh, the the twelve issues as well after the relaunch, and I love them. I love the Legion of Superheroes. You know, they. They're a very, very important part of the DC universe, as far as I'm concerned. And seeing them in the likes of like Legion of Three Worlds, and with you know helping out Superman when he was Superboy as well at one point, it's just things like that. It just makes it all the more awesome. Anyway, right, final one, Supergirl Zero. Now look, look closely at that cover quickly. Does she remind you of someone? Does she? Go look up Laura Vandervoort, people. That's, that's who she looks like right there quite interesting isn't it <laughs> but I actually love this cover purely because of the fact that she looks like Laura Vandervoort but it's such a glorious looking cover anyway so Supergirl Zero this is pretty much answers all the questions as to how Supergirl um, you know was brought to Earth what why her spaceship was constantly orbiting the sun um, and it pretty much comes to a head there's even a hint of a certain world killer down there as well as you can see okay um you know, we've got Jarrell running tests on Kara to make sure that she can survive the rigorous trip from Krypton to Earth. He knows about what's happening to the planet. He's aware of it. Him and Jarrell know already. They've already sent each other messages. Although they have, they have, they've had a massive rift between the pair of them, so they're not really talking that much. Um, there's a pod there which is reminiscent to something similar. If you've seen Supergirl the movie, that's pretty. That pretty much looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but again, um, she gets given the uh, the family crest, as you can see, the the, the family uniform, as it were, um, as as a as a rite of passage, basically, for her. Although um, it's 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 Zorel that gives it gives it to her, and you know Laura doesn't know about it. And um, oh, doesn't she look lovely? She does, doesn't she? I actually quite quite think she looks awesome in it. And then check this out. You see that there? Look familiar? Yes. That is one of the clones on Krypton. Okay. If you if you saw my uh, little review that I did last week of the other Zero issues, which include Superboy, you would learn more about how the clones, yeah, what happened to them. So anyway, um, so Zorel does something to Kara to, you know, put her into a stasis, um, so that she can fly to Earth without having to, you know, be worried about what's happening to her parents. Um, Alora realizes what what Zorel is up to, doesn't like it, attacks him. But by this time, Zorel's already, you know, sent Kara off, and yeah, he seals off. You, you remember in Super in one of the other comics, that obviously that I've reviewed on Supergirl, where she goes back to where um, Argo City is standing. Um, we see that you know Zorel actually was able to create a, a dome around. Um, Argo City and protect it from being destroyed with the rest of Krypton and you know he talks as I say he even talks about how his how, how the um, 
the spaceship is actually just going to be ro- orbiting the sun till he can save her again. Obviously, that didn't happen. Um, but that gives you indication, you know, when Superman eventually catches up with Supergirl again, you know, he says to her, you know, for some weird reason, I don't know why, but your spaceship was just orbiting the sun for a very long period of time. And how or, how or why it broke off, that's the that's thing that we don't know about. But again, very, very good issue. Pretty much answers all the questions that people have been asking. There you have it, people. <laughs> so anyway, that's it from me. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.